is up guys, Levi Peterson, you're back at it with another YouTube video. Today we are going to be reviewing Vital Feast from Reef Nutrition. Now, this, there's a few reasons why I recommend this stuff. It has 20 times more than any other brand in the country. and It's just awesome food for your corals. And I've known, um, I've seen, my corals weren't as vibrant as they were after I started feeding this. And they're definitely starting to reproduce and everything and spread, which is awesome. Um, I'm going to flip the camera around, we're going to talk a little bit more about the Phyto Feast, and I'm going to show you how to add the Phyto Feast to a small tank like this. This is my 10 gallon uh, tank, I've just got a Chromis in there and a couple different kinds of corals right now. I'm um, starting out kind of off with a couple softies and then working my way into LPS and then eventually SPS. So we're going to flip the camera around and talk about my plans for this tank and Reef Nutrition's Phyto Feast. All right, guys, this is my 10-gallon reef tank. Now, actually, some of this coral is actually from this tank, and I took it all out because I added that guy right there, which is very cool. This is kind of strictly a fish-only tank for right now. I have a couple palethos in there right now. Um, so far, the butterfly fish hasn't picked on them or anything, and then there's a chocolate chip starfish right up there. Um, and I'm keeping an eye on the butterfly fish because they can they're, they are known to pick at um, starfish feet and everything. So, and those two have a little aggression. I may end up getting rid of the Scopus Tang if he keeps it up, because I'd rather hit the Butterfly Fish. Um, other than that, let me focus this here. Um, kind of, we got some Palethos right here. These guys are really, really cool Pallies. Mushrooms, this, these are just Disco Mushrooms. I got a Disco there and a uh, Blue Disco up there. Um, waving Hand Polyps or Xenias. These are really cool Pom Pom Xenias, actually. Um, and I really just love the motion of these guys when they feed and I'm trying to get there we go They open and close constantly and they are really easy for beginners Especially um, just getting into the reefing hobby and everything and they spread like crazy So eventually once you get your tank gets up and going they'll spread like mad and these guys up here are already spreading There's already a few more heads on it than there was because I was just a small little piece um, and I got some really cool Zoas right here, awesome looking Zoas. And down here we got some more cool looking Zoas. And I got some S or no, LPS in here. Um, this is Hollywood Stunner Chalice, and that is a Hollywood Stunner Chalice that must have fallen off this rack, so I'm going to flip that guy back over. And then I got some more mushrooms scattered throughout the tank. And then a little feather duster. There is some type of clam behind here. I'm really not sure exact kind of this. There's a Kenny tree back there, and then we got some nice, you know, come on the other side here. There's the Kenny tree lurking down in there, and then this is just a big sponge that's grown real well. And this is actually some Zoas I rescued from that tank. Um, I believe the butterfly fish was picking on him. So I pulled him over here, hopefully he opens back up. He's been in here for maybe just about a day. Um, he is looking way better than he did. Um, the other day and there of course is the pom-pom crab we have three of those in here keep an eye on those two because those can be known to fight each other and actually steal each other's anemones off of one another so um one thing i'm keeping an eye on is there is a couple little tiny things of aptasia in here which i'm really watching it's kind of hard to see um so i'm really not happy about that um i will deal with that at a later time um Actually, I'll probably deal with that tomorrow because I really don't want to have an outbreak in here. So right now, I'm actually going to show you how to add this stuff with a little pipette. Now, people actually have different ways of adding this stuff to their tank. Some use pipettes and some just actually just pour it in. There's a little thing you can open and everything. Just pour some of it in. Um, the directions on it actually say a teaspoon per 100 gallons. So I'm actually just going to add a couple drips to this 10 gallon because I really don't want to overdose it you'll get massive algae problems um, and eventually you'll have problems with the tank being like looking uh, dirty and everything so what I do is I kind of just kind of squirt a little bit here and there um, slowly just kind of dosing the tank and definitely don't want to add too much like I said because you will definitely cloud up your tank um, it's not gonna hurt your tank but it'll definitely cloud it up and you'll definitely want to end up doing a water change this water level is a little bit low right now, and that's simple because it's at 80 degrees, and it evaporates real quick, real quick because it does not have a top. It's open, and the skimmer is overflowing, so I'll have to fix that in a little bit. Um, simple and easy. Um, sometimes I try to direct feed some of these corals because um, it's just fun to watch them eat and everything. I know the feather duster loves this stuff. Absolutely loves it. Um... Last time I actually fed this to my tank, I decided to pour 
it out of this thing and I poured a little bit too much so definitely don't recommend doing that definitely use a pipe bit. it's really easy to use um, that's actually all I'm gonna put in this tank as you can tell corals are definitely eating it because they're actually shrinking up and everything um, another thing that actually loves eating this stuff when it's out and about sometimes that clam lays flat and opens up real wide and that's when I really know it's hungry so I have to try to squirt a little bit on that just to make sure it gets enough food um, I'm honestly really proud of these zoas. These zoas are probably the most vibrant zoas I've ever kept in my life. So are these. These are actually the first zoas I bought, um, and they are really, really vibrant. When I had them in that tank, I didn't have the really good lighting, so they weren't as vibrant. They were just dark orange and dark green, and now that I have them in here, they look awesome. Same with these guys. Um, so I'm going to do a little bit more talking about the Fido Feast, and that's going to be it for this video. So here quickly, I'm actually going to talk about why I recommend Reef Nutrition's Phyto Feast over any other phytoplankton or different types of feeding things for corals out there and copepods and etc. Um, really, they are the best of the best and there's really no doubt about that. They have the best experience in the hobby. They've been in the hobby for a long, long time before I was even alive. Um, and this stuff simply has 20 times more than any uh, other company in the world and it is just top of the line like like I said I start feeding my corals this and they have colored up so much along with feeding them the oyster feast which is going to be a whole separate video and the TDL chroma boost TDL chroma boost is actually just a little pellet and everything and I actually set one on mushroom coral one day and a mushroom coral physically ate it in front of my eyes and I was so excited that I got a coral to actually eat a pellet so that's actually going to be on a separate video. Um, like I said, you do have to keep this stuff refrigerated. But like I said, it is the top of the line. Especially for feeding corals, tuna kits, feather dusters, scallops, and pretty much anything in your reef tank. Like microorganisms, copepods will eat this stuff and everything. And right now in this tank behind me, I actually have a massive copepod population. I added a whole bottom of tasty pods in here. And they are reproducing like crazy already. So my plan for those guys is actually to add a mandarin fish into this tank eventually. Um, I'm really still letting it establish fully. I don't want to add one too quickly. But there is definitely a nice established population thanks to Reef Nutrition here. So I will be getting a mandarin fish within the next couple months for this tank. A um, couple other plans for this tank. Definitely a watchman goby and a pistol shrimp pair. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, within the next couple weeks or something to add that in here and then the mandarin fish definitely for the last fish um, For a while I had actually thought about adding a uh, coral croucher gobies. Those are really cool. Check them out online um, They can be a bit pricey. They're kind of newer to the hobby and everything, but those are really cool fish I'd really like to get one. They're actually a type of a scorpion fish So definitely check those out if you have nano tanks or even big reef tanks um, other than that uh, I do have decals for sale. They're $4 a piece on my website, which will be linked below. Um, and I will be handing these out at Reef of Palooza. So be sure to be at Reef of Palooza in Chicago 2019. So really looking forward to Reef of Palooza coming up. Um, I will be there, like I said. So really excited. Other than that, that's really going to be it for this video. Don't forget to be the fish and keep reefing. We'll see you next time. Uh -huh.